Hi guys, I'm Karan Gokhani from Hopper's Restaurants in London. Today what I'm doing here is a very traditional fish polichattu. Uh, so effectively what the dish is, is you get yourself a white fish. Gilthead sea bream, what I'm using today. Uh, sea bass can work really well as well. You get a fillet or you could do an entire fish. So that fish has been filleted um, and then just marinated. So chili, turmeric, curry leaves, touch of salt and coconut oil in there, just rub nicely over the fish, there's skin on the other side, and I'm just gonna leave that there. The next layer, and this is where, you know, tons and tons of umami gets packed in, is a lovely rich tomato and onion sauce. So for that, I'm gonna be using garlic, just minced garlic, minced fresh ginger, Onions, red onions, you could use banana shallots, you could use Indian or Bombay onions, you could use Thai shallots, which are a lot more powerful. Turmeric, chili, the same thing that went in the marinade. These are brilliant. These fenugreek seeds um, have a lovely sort of bitter sweet flavor to them. Great bedfellow with, um, with fish and, and prawns and stuff. So we always sort of temper that off in the beginning before adding fish in. Sea salt, tomatoes. So I am using Italian tomatoes which also means one more thing, they're gonna be quite sweet because Italian tomatoes tend to be a lot sweeter than tomatoes you'd get back in India, which are a little more tart. Um, and I'm gonna to have to balance that with more citrus. Um, to pack it with more umami, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of tomato paste. Green chilies, again, very important to use fresh. Again, the Indian or, or African green chilies, which look like this. Curry leaves, which interestingly I grow at home, but we also, you get in bags, nothing, nothing like the dried stuff. And then this fascinating thing, goraka, uh, comes from the mangosteen family. You can sort of, mangosteen's a kind of fruit that you might've tried in Southeast Asia or Sri Lanka. It's a little round fruit with seeds inside. Um, the fruit is cut up and then smoked and dried. Coconut vinegar, another souring agent, so you've got Sourness from tomato, you've got sourness from garaka, and a little bit of this at the end if we need it. Coconut oil. I'm also going to be cheating and using some of this. Now, that is Maldive fish. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that, which will give you effectively an instant stock. So that is my instant stock cube. That beautiful Maldive fish or dried bonito or skipjack. Very similar to what you find, the katsu bushi you find in Japan. And then the most important ingredient. These are banana leaves, fresh banana leaves, which we're gonna wrap our fish up in. So we're gonna cook this second marinade of the sauce, wrap that fish around in that, give it a wrap in the banana leaf, and then sear on a pan. And all that smokiness and flavor from the banana leaf actually goes through, so it makes a big difference doing it in actual banana leaf. If you can't source it, you could use parchment paper or foil and just finish off in the oven. But today we'll do it traditionally, fish polichatu. So. I'm gonna go off to the hob and I'm gonna cook that sauce down and then we'll come back to wrapping the fish up. Get a pan over medium heat. Some coconut oil. Coconut oil has a tendency of setting. That's not a problem, it's a, uh, don't get worried. It should also have a lovely smell of coconut. Before it gets scorching hot and starts smoking, I'm gonna go in with those fenugreek seeds. Whenever using a dried spice, I like to go in in the fat all the, the flavor in that is all oil soluble. And if you were to put that into water, you just won't get the same flavor. So for me, adding dry spices to oil is always crucial. And that's how I sort of layer up my curries. A fourth of a teaspoon. It is quite powerful, but it's an amazing, amazing addition to any seafood curry. That just changes color slightly. And that's when the flavor, these don't pop like mustard seeds or cumin seeds. So you're not gonna hear a pop, but you will see that slight change in color. You don't want it to go too dark, otherwise they get very bitter. And at this stage, onions go in. Quite a lot of onions because you're gonna be reducing them. It won't be that dark brown reduction, but you really wanna soften them. Another little trick is using the right amount of fat and cooking down things like your onions, garlic, ginger to the right amount. Very often people add ginger and garlic first. Personally, I find adding onions in first is a better way of doing it because there's a lot more sugar in the garlic and it tends to burn faster. Coat them in the fat. You can see there's still some fat running around the pan, which is what you want. Add the salt into your onions now. 
because it draws the moisture out and that'll just mean that you're cooking them faster and they're reducing a lot faster and more evenly than they would if you hadn't added salt. Garlic, it's about three cloves worth of garlic in there. You can make it a little stronger. Four cloves worth of garlic and then nice chunk of ginger. That's about an inch of ginger. You want to cook this down now until that ginger and garlic is cooked through. It's not burnt. You don't want that, you know, fried garlic flavor in here. You want just that soft, nice, fresh garlic. If you find something sticking to your pan, just get a splash of water. Not too much, but literally that much water in there, which will just take everything else Take everything off your pan and then it'll all dehydrate quickly and then you've got that coconut oil back in there. So there you have it. These onions, I'm really happy with them. They're all nicely softened. The ginger and garlic is cooked through. You can see it's light golden. It isn't brown. The brown stuff is the fenugreek. So the ginger and garlic hasn't fried out and browned. So at this stage, I'm going to go in with curry leaves. Some people remove the stalks. I just go in because there's tons of flavor and then you can always pick them out later. I like adding it in now because I think the less you cook, the more it preserves that lovely smell. Green chilies, just a couple of sli uh, sliced up green chilies in there. The goraka, that fruit that we had soaked, I've used literally half of something like this. My secret ingredient, moldy fish. You could use fish stock instead if you don't have that, that beautiful, added layer of umami going in there, cooking off, and it's gonna make everything taste so much better. And then, our spices. So, using ground turmeric here, just a little bit. Again, it's that antiseptic, antioxidant property, that beautiful rich goldenness, but it is very powerful, so don't go crazy with that. Chili. For this, I'm using a Kashmiri chili. It's a milder and brighter chili because it's gonna be a gorgeous red sauce. Literally 15, 20 seconds on a low heat. You don't want to burn those delicate spices. A third of a tin of tomatoes. I'm going to give it a stir. Let it cook down fully until it's sort of thick, a bit like that. I guess I'll get that as well now. Just going to give it a stir. I like the rest of it. It's a bit of a waiting game now. But that's how you extract flavor. That's how you cook properly. So to recap all of that, my way of layering a curry is fat first, dried whole spices that can withstand that heat in there uh, because they're gonna flavor the fat and also release all their beautiful flavors. Then your onions, because they'll take longer to brown and you know cook to the extent you need them to. Ginger, garlic, have a little more sugar, cook a little faster. And then things like your powdered spices, just in for a few seconds because again, they, they need to go into the fat, but they can't withstand that heat. And then finally, things like tomatoes, pastes, and then finally we're gonna do coconut, coconut milk, and then we'll finish off um, with seasoning. So we're gonna have salt and a little bit of vinegar to balance it all out. Obviously, I forgot herbs, but herbs go in, for me, curry leaves go in just after the onions are finished, before the tomatoes come in. So still in fat, but they don't cook forever and lose all their beautiful potency. It's been about 15 minutes and my tomatoes and onions are perfect. They've reduced down to about that much. And what I'm gonna do is loosen it out a little bit with just a touch of coconut milk. I've seen the, the, the fat there, the coconut oil separate from it and that for me is a sign that this is perfectly cooked through and ready to go. So I'm gonna take this off the hob and I'm gonna allow this to cool down fully before we wrap the fish up. Vital ingredient there, banana leaves. So these are fresh banana leaves. Very often the bigger leaves would crack like that. Now to prevent that happening, there's a little magic trick that we always use. Get your flame on. Doing it on barbecue, you can do this over the barbecue. Basically a live flame or on a hot pan from this sort of relatively inflexible leaf, you get this beautiful, malleable leaf as you pass it over the flame. So change this color to that light green. You don't want it to burn. It's literally a second on a medium high heat. You get a lovely toasty flavor. Lovely, shiny banana leaf ready for my fish.
That's your sauce ready. Once again, that's the consistency you want because remember, this is gonna go wrap around your fish and a lot of those juices from the fish are gonna release. So it will then sort of self source. If it was too thin, it's all gonna fall off the fish. That banana leaf that we've singed on the, on the flame, see that beautiful glisten? This side is the sort of the good side. So we're gonna go inside. It's a bit like foil. You go on the dull side and that's the side you wrap on. Get a glove on, you've got chili, you've got turmeric, you've got all that good stuff that's gonna go into your nails and never come out. <sighs> Not always a problem, but um, this particular instance, I'd rather wear my glove. Your marinated fish, um, I'm gonna go skin side down, but before I do that, just a little bit of that lovely marinade. That was stem from the curry leaves. Let's discard that. Spread that out, get your fish on, just on top of like that and then a little more on top. It's really nicely through. And just wrap it up lightly like that. It doesn't need to be a tight seal, just like that. And this is now gonna go on to my pan and sizzle away in oil until that's completely burned through and that flavor is right into the fish. So all you need for this step is a large pan that's gonna fit your entire fish in there, melt some coconut oil in there, so that fish has been cooking for about two and a half minutes on the skin side. And then slide your fish slice, just roll over. Look at that beautiful leaf. It hasn't burned through. If the oil was too hot, it would have gone straight through. It would have turned black. But this to me is the perfect color. You can look through that. So a minute on the other side and then we're good to serve up. So there we have it. Delicious smoking fish. All you need to do now is just lift it off. You'll have some of that oil come out. Just give it a tease. Straight into your plate. Just open it up. Secure that, that crunchy leaf. Caramelized perfectly. Nothing's burned through. I'm not even going to add that yet. And literally break through. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, perfectly cooked fish. Gorgeous. There we have it. Smoking away. Mm. This is honestly one of my absolute favorite ways to cook fish. Oh wow, that's spicy. I can't wait for you to try this at home. Enjoy.